Okay, this will be part two. This is where we're going to start tracing the information that we need. Okay, so this is where I'm going to start working around my origin from time to time. It's not 100% required at the moment. Just remember that this is an important point to work around. Okay, so now that we've established, we've set up our images to the correct scale, the next thing we need to do is start reproducing this information and capturing it in in detail. So now, and tracing this information. So with this light bulb, I'm going to move the light bulb. Just grab it as central as central as you can, and I'm going to move that to my origin. Now remember, you can't snap things to your origin. So what you can do is, while this command's active, if you've got dynamic inputs on or off, if they're off, you can simply type 0, 0, 0, 0, and it'll move it to the origin. However, if you've got dynamic inputs on, you're going to go to move, select this object, and now it's giving you, on your screen, you can see it's asking you to add in values, and if you use tab, you can use different settings. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click shift on your keyboard and 3 to enable the hash. You're going to use the hash command. So let's do that again, so move. So anywhere over here, click. Now you're going to, you're going to go shift hash. So what this does is it forces it to send it to your origin, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that's that's your origin. Okay, so now put the light bulb close to my origin. Okay, okay, great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a construction line, X line, vertical, and I'm going to use that command again. Shift, 0, 0, 0. Great, so now let's put my construction line right on my center of my light bulb. Because in theory, you just want to draw the one half and then you can mirror and then join everything into one. Okay, just remember this light bulb has two, two parts. It's got a glass section, so a translucent or transparent section, and then it's got an actual fitting adapter, and I'll show you how to draw this information. Okay, all right, so we need to represent a thread in a certain way. Okay, all right, now that we've got our construction lines, and I know that my light bulb, if we go back to dimensions, is 60 mil, I'm going to go and use an offset command. So construction line, X line, offset, 40. In this direction. So I'm only going to do it in one direction. Ah, but it must be offset by 20. So offset 20. Okay. Right, so, uh, sorry, my apologies. 30. Offset 30. Offset in this direction. That's good. All right. Okay, so technically, this is slightly inaccurate, but I mean, that's fine. I can leave this as 30. I'm not too worried, okay? So I'm going to trace this as best as I can, but what I am going to do is capture my origin, and I'm going to capture where these happen, okay? So I'm going to capture where these objects... Okay, so just remember the construction line. These points, you want to print, snap it on the middle because if you want to change the angle, you can use the grip to change the angle or you can grab the central grip to move it up and down. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do, the reason why I've worked around the origin, if I go to control one, I want to work with round dimensions. And you can see that on the y-axis that it's 78.6. I'm going to make sure that it's exactly 78. Okay. My apologies, you want to use that center, so you want the base point, you want this base point to be 78 on the dot. So all I've done is I've moved this, this node up and down. That's all I've done. Okay, just trying to work accurately. X line again, horizontal, shift nearest. I'm snapping on this line over here. So remember, shift right click, nearest. So I'm going to use this point over here. And I'm going to use this point over here. Okay, select this guy. Again, I also want to make these round numbers. So let's make that 101. You'll notice it nudges it up. I don't want to work with inaccuracies. Okay, this one I'm going to make. 104 was in the middle, so I'm going to make that 106. Okay. Enter. Okay, I'm just working quite accurately. It's something that I think I want you to encourage that you work accurately. Okay, so my first part of my line work is going to work 
down in this section and then I'll make a separate line work for the base. Okay. All right, so I can call it light base and light, light glass. So here I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to create a new layer, call this light glass. And I can make this a good color. So I can make this a red. I'm going to use yellow for now. Okay, that's good. Make sure everything is set by layer. That must be, that's correct, continuous. And 0.5, this I'm going to make 0.15 because this will be slightly thicker and it's something that might sit in the background. So that's my light glass. I'm going to create one more layer, call this light base. Okay, I'm going to make this red. And I'm going to make this 1.8 so it's slightly thicker. Then the last thing I'm going to do is create another layer. I'm going to call this light fitting. Okay, and I'm going to make that red as well, and that could be 1.8 as well. Okay, great. Alright, so I'm going to use construction lines first, and then I'll convert them to the correct layer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with a polyline command. So a polyline command, let me explain the difference. If I start drawing with a bunch of line work, just remember, if these are separate lines, they are not connected. So if I move the center, they're not connected. If I move this object by the center, it's not connected. However, if I select the nodes, they will move together, this node over here, provided both lines are selected. But just remember, these are not joined. These are not a connected series of lines, okay? If you use a polyline, they are connected. So if I grab this polyline over here and you see if I click one, it selects them all. If I move this one, it stretches. If I move this one, it stretches. And you can see it gives you a total different handle. Okay. You want to work with polylines as most as you can. Just remember you can always explode a polyline and it becomes, it turns back into a series of lines. But you can also convert these series of lines back into a polyline. So if you go to modify, there's a, mo there's a mo uh, edit polyline command. Here it's asking you you want to select multiple lines, so select multiple. If you select multiple objects, okay, and it's asking you want to convert this to a polyline, yes, and then you say J, J for join, so it joins all of them. And then if you click them, you'll notice they're all back into polylines. So just remember that, that tool. Okay, so I'm going to use a series of polylines to do this, or a polyline. I'm going to start over here, and what's neat about a polyline is that it allows you to add an arc, part of the same command. This arc is not going to work for me, so I need a second point. So I'm going to click here as my second point and drag to end my command. Okay. So here I might have to use the second point again. So I'm going to hit S for second, click over here, and then drag it as far as I can over here. Okay. So here I've got one more arc to make, and you can see. If I just leave the R command, command alone without the second point, it's doing a good job. I click once more. Now I need to make a complete circle. And you can see it's done a really good job. Spacebot to end the command. So now I've got one set of polylines. Okay, I've got a construction line now, and I've managed to trace this very accurately. So this is great. It's enough detail, and I think it will represent the light bulb accurately, the glass section. Okay. Now, you can leave this just like this, that's fine, because the next bit of line work will be the, the light base. So I'm going to select this bit of line work, and I'm going to convert this to the light glass. If I'm happy with the results, select the line work, and I'm going to use the mirror command. So use the mirror command, select over here, and I'm simply going to mirror the light bulb and say yes. Okay, it's always asking for an access to mirror. My apologies. When I use the mirror command, I tell it to delete the source objects, which you should keep. So mirror, select a base point. Remember base point. Now it's asking you for an axis, and I've got a construction line. So anywhere along this construction line, and I'm going to say no. Just press enter to continue. Now you can see it's made these two sides for me. Now remember these are not joined. Yes, they are polylines, but I need to join them together. So I'm going to go to modify use the polyline command, and then I'm going to say M for multiple, so I can select multiple objects. Yes, it recognizes that they're polylines already, but I want to join them. 
join type. Here you can specify a tolerance in case there's a slight gap between the two nodes. That happens quite a lot, okay? But I know that I've worked quite accurately, so I'm going to press enter. And now you can see now that they are one, they are now one polyline or one object. Okay, so that's great. Great. Now I'm going to start creating this base. So X line vertical. Okay, remember I want to work accurately and I want to work with my X base point. I'm going to make that. 13, let's see if how accurate that was. No, 13.5, 13.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.
with this bit of line work over here. I want to trim that line work as well. Okay. Now I want to do the same over here. I want to use match property. So match this line work with that property. Okay. Spacebar. Now I want to use the trim command or I can use the fillet command and set the radius to zero. Now if I use this command and that command, that command and that command. Okay. Now I need to trim. I use the trim again. So trim, use T for cutting. Select this object over here. Trim that line over here. Done. And you can see it trims it the rest of the way. So here I've got 80% of my thread in place. Okay. But here remember, I want to trim this line work again. But I'm going to leave it here for the time being. Now, you've got two options with your images. You can go and switch your image off. So use the off. So now you can see... Oh, I can see this clearly, so I want to mirror this. So I mirror this object there to there. Okay, that's correct. And I want to mirror this corner as well. Mirror that from there to there. Okay. Now, we need to use the trim command because some information we need to trim. Sorry, in this line I can, I can mirror as well. These objects, you don't have to make them polylines for now because it's interior detail. So it's not that important. Okay, there I've got those objects. Now I'm just going to use a trim command. I'm going to use T for cutting. So I'm going to select this object and I'm going to select this object over here. So here I can trim this one. Spacebar, trim. And I can trim this little line work here and trim this bit of line work here. Okay, now I've got my detail. With this layer active, now I can use my lines. And because my on snaps are on, I can snap from that corner to that corner, from that corner to that corner. So that's just representing my thread, okay? Okay, so that's just a, a representation of my thread. I don't have to go and draft my red, thread in. Okay, now that I've got my light bulb, I can delete all my construction lines because I don't need them anymore. So this is my light, my light bulb. Okay. I've given them different layers just so that you can control it differently, but it doesn't matter if you've made your light bulb or one layer, you can leave it like this. Okay. All right. So remember, you're going to repeat the process. Let me just switch on. You're going to repeat the process to document this light fitting. And remember, we might have to do some, we have to change some of the detail here to make it represent a bit better in here. It's not 100% necessary, but I'll show you how you can combine blocks, etc. Anyway, now the last step that we want to do is we want to make this a block. We want to make this object a block. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off my images again because I don't need them for the time being. Switch off my images. Switch them off. Now, I want to make this object a block. Okay, so if I copy this information, copy. Remember, copy. Select this information. Move it to the side. Okay. All right. I want to make this a block. So my layers, I'm going to change my layer. I'm going to change this to light fitting. Because I want that to be the block to manage this whole thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say in the home ribbon, there's a block. So I'm going to say create block. Okay. Now it's going to ask you for a whole lot of information. So the first thing is you want to pick a base point. So my base points I'm going to pick, especially if I'm going to use this to connect to other objects. How does a light bulb connect? So I'm going to say pick points. And I'm going to assume that it'll connect here into the light fitting. So I'm going to make this my base point. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, it's asking you select what objects you want to convert to a block. Select these objects. Now you see that it's got a whole lot of information and you want this to, you want to allow this to be exploded and you want to convert everything to a block instantly. Okay. Now you're going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this light, light bulb one. Okay, now I've got a light fitting. So, so press copy again. What's neat is when you create a block and you've got a grip, you can now use your space bar. 
if you keep pressing a space bar, it will give you different commands instantly. So that's what's nice about making blocks. Okay, they're nice to work with. However, this is not a block. So if I want to work with this object and I go move now, you see, you, you miss a whole lot of information. It's good to work with blocks. And just remember, if you've got a block and whatever you edit in the block, they all change. Okay, so they have a relationship. So this one, if I want to move work with this light bulb, you can see it's hard to work with. It's not great. Okay, so if I bring back my images, what's neat is now that I've got a light bulb and I copy, So now I can see how this will work with that. So now they've got a block. What's neat about a block is it's built into the database of this actual drawing. So if I go to the home ribbon again and I go to insert, here you can say, if you hold down this arrow, you can find the blocks that you want to insert or you click on insert and you can simply click the light bulb. And now you can keep using it again and again and again and again and again. Just remember, this is on the light fittings. Layers, so if I switch to the light fittings, it might still show just because the other layers inside are still on. So the light bulb and the, so just remember that if you switch off light glass or the glass switches off. So just understand that relationship. Okay. Right, so that's I've created a block. Now Now you need to go and produce a block of this object as well, but you use exactly the same process of this. Okay, so I'm going to document that process and show you the end result shortly. Okay, so I've gone and done the same process with this light fitting itself. Okay, so now you can see I've got two blocks. Now I'm going to switch off my images in the background. Okay, now that I've got two blocks, what it allows me to do, it allows me to use these snap points more effectively and I can build these components a lot better. Okay, so here for your snap point to this point over here, so let's pull this back. Now what's interesting is when you create a block, this is called an insert, insert point. So if I grab this insert point and I want to match these insert points, if I shift right click, you'll see that it will have a section where you can snap from insert point to insert point. Okay, so here you need to go to insert. Now you'll see it will have special special symbol telling you how these connect. Now you'll notice when I made this actual fitting, this brass fitting for my light bulb, I've got some dashed line work in here. So maybe what I want to do now is I want to edit this block. So let me show you how this works. I copy this to one side. I want to edit this block to reflect the dashed line to show a lot of detail on how this all connects at the back. Okay, so here I can also see I made a slight error. This should have been a straight line. So that's that's what's nice about working with the block. So let's sort that out. So let's click on the, the block itself. If you right click and you go to block editor, so you're going to go to block edit. Or if you select in the block, sometimes there's a tool that opens up, but here you just want to go and say edit at the top, edit. So now you're going to edit light bulb one. Okay, great. Now it opens it up in another specific window. So let's just fix, fix my first error. These things should have been joined. So if PE is polyline edit. Remember, home, modify, polyline edit. PE is the shortcut. You're going to select that one and you're going to say J for join and you're going to join this, this object to it as well. Done. Now there should be one object. I could have used multiple select as well. Now I'm going to use a bit of line work. Just remember, make this your active layer. So you can use this tool here, make current. Or you remember, so if you select a layer, this in your layer section, this tool will allow you to make this the current layer. I click alpha line. And I'm going to finish this detail. Okay. Now, I have a problem here because I want this to be dashed and I want this to be red. So this is a connection point. This needs to be dashed lines. Okay, so how do we do that? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I need to break, I need to break this, this part of my polyline away from this part over here. So select the polyline, you're going to go to modify, there's a special break tool. So I'm going to break this object, I'm going to click from here, I'm going to break to there. I'm going to space, space bar, repeat command, break from there to there. Okay, 
Now you can simply grab this polyline and grab the node and pull it back. Or you can use the extend tool. So in the trim section, if you hold this arrow down, you click extend. That's asking you for boundary edge. Select the boundary edge and then you can select the object and then spacebar. That's another way to do it. So there's two ways to do it. Now I need to override all of this line work so that it's dashed and that it's it's a grade line hidden away. So I'm going to press Control 1, open up my properties. Remember, you can also open up properties if you go to view, click on properties. Okay. Now I'm going to change this line to be select other colors. So if you go select colors, I want to use this 8 or 9. It's up to you. I'm going to use 8 for this example. Now I'm going to override the line style, so the line type. I'm going to change this to dashed. Okay, center. I want to change this to hidden or dashed. Okay, I'm going to use hidden. Okay, now remember, if there are missing, if there are missing line types, you can load a lot more. So let me show you we get that. <coughs> Apologies. All right. If you want to load more line types, if you go to Home tab and you go to the Properties section, here you can see there's this line. So if I pull down this arrow and I go to Other. It opens up this dialog box. Okay, this little arrow here does the same thing. Sorry, that opens up properties. So that's a shortcut to where your properties lives as well. Okay, pull down this arrow. And you're going to go to other. Now, if you say load, now you can load in a whole lot more types of different line types. And there are loads of these libraries. Okay, you can load a lot more different types. But for now, we're going to leave it as ISO. Here you can get insulation layers, there's a whole lot, but we're going to work with a hidden line for now. So here I want to use hidden. Okay, so I'm going to load, just remember we can load some more hidden ones, hidden type twos. They've All that's happening is they've got different scales. Okay, you can let's load hidden two. Okay, just remember they're going to have different scales and they're going to represent differently in the view. Okay, I'm going to leave hidden as my, op press OK. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to change this, Control 1. I'm going to change all of this to hidden. Now, this is a big thing that you need to understand. Okay, if I click on this icon again and I open up other. Now, what's important is you must make sure by default a lot of these drawings, it's set to use paper scales units for scaling. You don't want that. You want to see the, the hidden stuff in your model space as on your sheet. There are certain instances when you do that, but if you're using AutoCAD, a new versions of AutoCAD, I recommend switching this off, and you're going to change your global scale factor to 10 maybe. But we're not going to change it for now. We can affect this later on. Press OK. Now, you're not going to see this the hidden lines at the moment, so you might have to change this to, you might have to up this or lower this value. So the line scales so at 0.5 maybe. Okay. If it's not visible, you can use RE, Regen, Regen's of you. Okay. So here we're not getting it. So let's go 10, 20, 20. Okay. So we need to go smaller. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. There we go. So. That's working now because I've scaled down my scale factor. Okay, but I can go a lot smaller. I will make a separate video to cover this topic. Okay, 0 0.05. It all depends on the scale that you're working, etc. So I'm going to finish the command now and save changes. Now you would have noticed all my light bulbs would have changed. Okay, so here I'm using it. So let's edit this block and let's just see what this one was done. So let's say edit block, select this line, and let's just see what the, so it was 0.1 and I'd used hidden. So maybe I want to match those properties. So save block. Okay, go back into this one, um, edit, edit, change this, um, control one, open my properties, 0.1, and I'm going to change this to dashed. But I'm going to leave it hidden. Okay. Yeah, that works well. 
you know, it's just it's, and it depends on the scale that you're going to draw. And I think the scale that we're going to be drawing now, I don't think we need to go smaller than that. So at least now these hidden objects match each other. Here it's we're just saying that this was a thread on the external because this thing will work on a thread, and now this is a, it's going into a flitting. You're just showing a bit of hidden detail. Okay, I can get rid of these now. Okay, now. I've got these combined. You can make these one block as well. So you can make these a combined light fitting. You can do that as well. Okay, so you could have made a separate block so that these are combined. But what's neat is we've got a light bulb. Move that to my origin. Just remember if you're using this, you need to use the hash. So let me just do that again. Move hash zero, comma zero, comma zero. Enter. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's important. So now that I've made these blocks, I can now move my light bulb in the correct location. Now I can switch my layers, my image layer back on. Okay. All right. Now the last thing I've got to do is I've just got to start building and building the bones of my actual design. So this is where you're going to import some sketches and you're going to start using these sketches to um, tackle this. But in my next video, I will cover how you go and detail this and how you set this drawing up.